I had an aha moment the other day and I thought I would share it with you. It concerns the difference between being interested versus being committed and how that works as far as you becoming the success that you desire and deserve to be. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And I came upon this aha moment by putting different puzzle pieces together. You know, we have, have talked about on this channel many, many times about being creative and, and getting things done requires input from the infinite mind to help you to see things clearly, to take your subconscious, put all those things together. And that happened to me the other day. I was thinking about why some people are not successful in what it is they do, why they give up so easily, the difference between being interested in something and being committed to something. And I want to share with you uh, a little bit of a, a, from a talk by Simon Sinek, one of my favorites. Uh, great, great person to, to watch. He, videos all over the place on YouTube and every place else and I want to share this with you and come to a conclusion and, and show you what I came up with and talk about it a little bit okay fair enough first of all and this is a quote from Simon Sinek, Simon Sinek <clears throat> metrics are fine they're just not accurate in the short term and they're not fixed in time I have a question do you love your wife or your significant other prove it What's the metric? Give me the number that helps me to know because when you met her, you didn't love her, right? Now you love her. Give me the date that love happened. It's an impossible question. It's not that it doesn't exist, it's just that it's easier to prove over time. If you were to go to the gym and work out, you go home, you look in the mirror, you don't see any change. And if you go to the gym the next day and you look in the mirror, you still see no change. Clearly, no results, it can't be measured, it must not be effective, I quit. Or, if you fundamentally believe that this is the right course of action, you stick with it. Like in a relationship. I bought her flowers and I wished her a happy birthday. There's something there. You commit yourself. You commit yourself to the regimen, the acts of service. You may follow it up, you know, as far as going to the gym is concerned, losing weight, you may eat a hunk of chocolate cake or skip a day at the gym, but if you continually exercise, I'm not sure, exactly sure what day it's going to be, but I know that you're going to start to get into shape. The same can be true with a relationship. It's not about the events. It's not about the intensity. It's about consistency. Going to the gym for eight hours, that doesn't get you into shape. Working out every day for 20 minutes a day, that does get you into shape. It's the daily practice of all the monotonous, boring things that matter the most. You see, she didn't fall in love with you because you bought her flowers and remembered her birthday. She fell in love with you because when you woke up in the morning, you said good morning to her before you checked your phone. She fell in love with you because when you went to the refrigerator to get yourself a drink, you brought, you brought one for her without even asking. She fell in love with you because you had an amazing day at work and she had a terrible day at work. And you didn't say, yeah, but let me tell you about my day. You sat, you listened to her awful day, and you didn't say a thing about your amazing day. That's why she fell in love with you. I can't tell you what day or what you specifically did, but it was the accumulation of all the little things that you did that made her wake up one day as if a button had been pressed and decided she loved you. Consistency over time. Once again, that's Simon Sinek. Now, think about when, when I reviewed that and I thought in my mind, how does that apply to things that happen in life? Well first thing I thought of was being a teacher and being a coach. You know, the first day that you 
you know, start working to be a teacher, you're looking to develop some sort of a rhythm to how you're going to do things, how it's going to work. The same thing is true as a coach. You start off, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning, and then you become a master, or, or not necessarily a master, but more masterful at your craft, and then you give yourself the identity of, now I'm a teacher, now I'm a coach. Where before you're thinking like, well, I'm there, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. But once you get that identity, you've built up that self-esteem, you have confidence, then you become that particular person, the teacher, the coach, the salesperson, the leader. Do you follow what I'm saying? Does that make some sense? All right. So what is it exactly that we, where we run into problems. You run into problems when you don't have, quote unquote, the faith. And what do I mean by that? Well, like we said, you know, you, you go to the gym, you work out, you look in the mirror, and there's that same old body that you had yesterday. It doesn't happen all at once, but you have faith in what you're doing. You have faith in the fact that if you continue to work out, your body will get into better shape. If you continue to eat more wisely, if you're not eating all that junk food, that it's, you're going to get into shape. When you do those little things, it's because you have those, the faith. But most importantly, what keeps you going is your why. That is the critical thing. You say to yourself, this isn't the body that I want or this isn't the person that I want to be as a teacher. I want to be that teacher that people look up to that look forward to going to class. Or I want to be the coach that takes a group of players that have some skills and fine tune them and, and hone them so that they become an excellent team, not just a group of individuals. And then you become that particular person. So it's, there, there are two things that we want to focus on here. The first thing we want to focus on is getting your why down. Is, is because what happens, that the elixir that makes people continuously move forward is one word, and that elixir is progress. When you're making progress, boy, you're super motivated. You start losing some weight, Okay, and you're more, more, more motivated to keep up the discipline of going to the gym, of eating correctly. So that progress keeps you going. But here's the problem. Sometimes progress is unbelievably slow and it's easy to give up when progress is slow. People say, well, that's never going to happen next, and then they move on to something else. That's why your why is so important. The next time that we get together, we're going to go over these two elements. Number one, how do you get your why to be compelling? How do you change yourself from being somebody that's interested versus someone that's committed? And the other thing we're going to talk about is the magic of compounding. Just as you do with money, compound interest. When you, have, when you are compounding your skills, that is what's going to take you to the next level. So next time we get together, that will be our focus. Today, we went over the what. Next time we get together, we're going to go over the how you overcome this particular issue and takes you from someone that's being merely interested to someone that's committed. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.